Hello everyone, welcome to VLSI Academy. This is 21st lecture and today we will understand about whole timing fixes in a timing path. This is a second part of previous lecture. In the previous video, we have seen that how can we fix the startup timing violations. In this video, we will see what are the general causes of whole timing violations and how can we fix it. All right, let's get started. So this is a whole timing report with us for reference. And we will also take a schematic for ease of explanation. In this timing path, this is our start point. This is our end point. So if you see UFF0 slash CLKM becomes your clock pin. So this is CLKM is actually the clock name. Let's say this is coming from some clock source. It is reaching to end point and start point. So in this timing path, if you see your hold is calculated from launch to capture like this. Let's say this is your waveform of start point. This is your waveform of end point. This is your launch clock. This is your capture clock. And your hold is calculated on this edge. Now, if you see, this is your zeroth instant. So in launch clock also, it will be zeroth instant. And in capture clock also, it will be zeroth instant only with respect to the clock period. Now, if you see, there is no clock source latency mentioned. So if this is ideal clock, this will be no clock source latency. And clock will come from input port and it will go to clock buffer. So let's say there is uck buff 0 slash c. So there is a buffer with 60 ps of delay. Let's assume that here there is one buffer and there is one more buffer. So buff 0, buff 1, there are two buffers of 60 PS each. So let's mention that number here for reference. So your clock network delay total becomes until it reaches UFF0 slash CK pin. So this is your CK pin and until it reaches this pin UFF0 slash CK pin, the total delay is 120 PS. So if you see till this point, your delay is 110 approximately of the rounding of this and then DFF, uh, after this DFF, there is a Q pin. So if you see 30 PS of delay here, so this total clock to Q delay is 30 PS. After this, there is a NAND cell. This NAND cell has a delay of 10 PS. So this has delay of 10 PS, then there is a buffer and this U buff 4. So let's write the name of buffer as buff 4. Now this buffer has a delay of around 30 PS. So total arrival time will be like this from this point to this point. That would be 60 plus 60, 120. Here they have taken 110 for reference. So let's say 110 plus 30, 140 plus 10, 150 plus 30, 180. So total 180 PS until it reaches UFF1 slash D pin. UFF1 slash D pin. So it becomes total here till here it will be 180. So data arrival time we will write as 180 PS. And after that there is a there is a clock in the capture path. So there are two buffers here also, if you see. So there is one buffer here, let's say, and there is one buffer here. Actually, if you see this buffer and this buffer is same, which means that this buffer is common. So it must be sitting here. Okay. And there is no buffer here. So actually, it, the clock path will not be like this. In fact, it will be something like this. So this has 60 PS of delay and this has 60 PS of delay. So it will be like this buffer is common in both of the paths. After that, there is a buffer of 70 PS delay. So this delay will be actually 70 PS. And now clock uncertainty is here. They have taken zero because it is ideal clock. Then there is a library hold time, which is 10 PS. So if you if you calculate the total here, it becomes 190 PS. So required time is 190 PS. Now in the case of hold, 
how do we calculate the slack we calculate the slack like this arrival time should be greater than required time so that data should be at least this much delay but if we see it is actually lesser and there is a slack violating by 10 ps in nanosecond it is minus 0 0.01 so this is violating by 10 ps now that we know that there is a violation in this path so what can we do to fix it we know that this is the minimum requirement of the data path delay so we should increase the delay in this path to to increase the delay what we can do is either we can downsize the cell downsize the cell means it will actually take a cell of lower drive strength if the lower drive strength cell is used then what will happen is actually it will increase the delay of this because then the driver of this cell the driving capability decreases so cell delay will increase eventually second option is you can change it to higher vt cell higher vt cell means you can use a cell of higher threshold voltage that will be slower cell so you will use a slower vt cell that cell will have actually higher delay because it is slower to rise and slower to fall cell so it will switch slowly that means it will have a higher delay compared to a standard vt or lower vt cell third option that we have with us is you can detour the net or you can insert a delay cell inserting the delay cell will actually decrease the will actually increase the delay of this path let's say if we add a delay cell here which have a delay of 30 ps let's say so if you have added one cell at the end point here then it will be actually increasing the delay of this path eventually so that is called as end point fixing in a whole timing path because now you can see that arrival time is actually increased by 30 ps hence this slack will actually increase by 30 ps means it will actually be positive by 20 ps but to do that you need to make sure that you have enough setup margin also in this path because this data path delay if you are increasing you might be violating the setup timing path in a setup related corner that's all for this video we will share more concepts in further videos please like share and subscribe to the channel please don't forget to give your important feedback in the comment section thank you